My name's Chris, and I repair my own audio equipment, and I also show you how to repair yours. So let's get started. A dim bulb tester is a must-have on any test bench, but if not used properly, it can also damage your equipment. What you're about to see can be applied to any piece of vintage audio equipment you guys may own. So let's get started. I've got two projects going on right now. One is a Sony TA E86B preamp and the other is a Pioneer SX1050 receiver. The dim bulb tester saved me with the Sony. The Pioneer, if I wasn't careful, I would have blown it up with the dim bulb tester. I'll show you how both situations occurred. If you haven't already, please subscribe. First, I'll talk about how I used the dim bulb tester with the Sony TAE86B preamp and how it saved me. I do what I always do with every piece of equipment. I physically take a look at it, and when I'm ready, I power it up on the dim bulb tester. Well, I powered it up, and it was deader than a doornail. It'd be just like you didn't have the dim bulb tester even plugged in the wall. You didn't see anything from the bulb at all. Absolutely nothing. The preamp did absolutely nothing. So I'm not going to go into details about the restoration of this preamp because hopefully down the road I'm going to have a video on it. And this video is about the dim bulb tester. So I'm just going to cover how this dim bulb tester saved me. And you think, well, how'd it save you? It was dead in the water anyway. Because normally you think a dim bulb tester, if it saved you, it was glowing bright and it was deader than a doornail. So it kind of made you think, well, you could just plug it straight in the wall. Well, after a period of time of troubleshooting, sure enough, it's shorted. I found out I had a power supply problem that kind of made sense because it wouldn't power up. And I had to order a transistor that I found that was bad in the power supply. So I ordered the transistor and I waited a couple days. Finally, shipment came in from Mauser. I got the transistor. I installed the transistor. I still had the preamp in the dim bulb tester. And this time when I turned it on, bright, whoa. So something was wrong with the preamp with the new transistor I put in. And I thought to myself, see, I had to get a uh, equivalent. I couldn't get the exact same one. So I was thinking to myself, did I order the wrong one? That's my first thought. Because when I initially powered it up with the bad transistor, it didn't do that. It didn't have any indication on the dim bulb assembly that there was any kind of excess current draw. So I thought about it a minute. And it's always this way, isn't it? You guys that do anything that you, I can tell you about what happened in five or ten minutes, but it took longer to figure out what happened. So my first thought was, is that the right transistor? And I was pretty confident it was the right transistor. I installed it correctly and it should work. Well, I started to think about it and a lot of times, not all the time, See, I, was, I took the assumption that that was my problem. It's a bad transistor. Sure enough. It shorted. And it was a bad transistor. But it went bad for a reason. There was still a short in the power supply. And now, when I put in a new transistor, and it was on the dim bulb tester, it didn't blow it. That's the idea of how a dim bulb tester is supposed to save you. I am pretty confident if I would have plugged it straight into the mains and turned it on, I would have had another bad transistor. But that's what the dim bulb tester did for me. It took that current to where that transistor survived, and now I was able to go and troubleshoot the real problem. And I should have known that to begin with, but... Sometimes you just have a transistor go or a capacitor go or what have you and you replace it. It's one item and you're off and going. It took me a little bit of time to think what is going on here. And so I did more troubleshooting of the power supply 
And what did I have? I had a shorted electrolytic capacitor. This electrolytic, it's a one microfarad, 35 volt electrolytic, and it's shorted. That was the real problem. The electrolytic capacitor had shorted. It was actually a tantalum capacitor, but a polarized capacitor. And it shorted out, and I'm sure it took the transistor with it. Well, as I said a couple minutes ago, it's always easy to talk about it now, of how easy it was uh, to find this. But at the time, it wasn't all that simple. So there were two problems. That dim bulb tester saved me, and I was able to troubleshoot a problem safely without doing any harm to the preamp. While I was waiting on parts for the Sony preamp, I worked on a Pioneer SX1050 receiver. And in this case, using a dim bulb tester for what I was doing would have been a tragic error and could have ended up in a blown receiver. Even when I don't have an issue like you just saw with the Sony preamp, I normally, when I work on the vintage audio equipment, I keep the piece of equipment plugged into my dim bulb tester while I'm in there repairing or restoring it. In case I make some sort of mistake, I've got that little bit extra of protection that may save the unit. In this, what I want to show you is the dim bulb tester is a wonderful piece of equipment. It's really something you need to have if you're going to work on this equipment. But here's one hazard of it, and that's checking the idle current, not checking it, but adjusting the idle current when you're plugged into a dim bulb tester, because that's going to affect the current that this unit can draw, because some of it's going to be drawn by this bulb in this dim bulb tester. So the point is, it'll fool you. According to the service manual, they show you the adjustments for both the left and the right channel and where to hook your meter, which I'm going to hook up here. I've got a couple probes here. And they tell you what pins to go to. And they tell you what voltage you should have between those pins. So in this unit's case, it's pin 2 and pin 6, which is down here on the bottom for the left channel, and pins 15 and 19 up here for the right channel. So I'm just going to hook up to one of them. Right now I got my meter off, the unit's off, and I'm going to check the idle current when the 1050's plugged in the dim bulb tester. And what I think you're going to see is it's going to look much, much lower than 50 millivolts. And that can fool you into thinking you need to adjust it up. And if you adjust that up, when you've got it plugged into the dim bulb tester. I'm not saying you're going to blow up the receiver, but you certainly can because it can mislead you into thinking that you need to have more bias voltage here when you really don't. So I'm going to turn on my dim bulb tester, and now I'm going to the front here, down here to the power switch, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. So here we go. And you've seen that bright kind of flash when you first turn it on, and that's normal. That's what you're going to have, right? You have that big current draw while these filter capacitors are charging for that split second. So that light just kind of explodes, boom, and then it just settles right on back down to very little. I've got a little bit of a glow here. You can see it a little bit on the camera, not as well as I can, I don't think. But... What I really wanted to show you is look at the meter. There's only 11 millivolts. And according to the service manual, we're supposed to have 50. Your first inclination is probably to go around here to the other side and adjust the pots for the idle current. But you don't want to do that. So this can fool you. And this is the only downside to the dim bulb tester. It's got a lot of benefits from keeping you from blowing up your stuff, but once you get your unit up and running and you know it's fine on the line voltage, you wanna do all these checks that you do, the DC offset and especially the idle current without it plugged in. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna power down the 1050. I'm going to take it out 
of the dim bulb tester, which I have it in, I'm going to plug it straight into the mains and let's see what it shows then as far as the idle current. So now what I've done, I've taken the plug out of the dim bulb tester and I've put it straight into the mains. So here we go. I'm going to flip the power on. You can kind of see the dial lamps there and there it goes. And look already, look at the idle current. 20, 22. Right? It takes a little while for this to settle down, but it's going to be a lot closer to 50 than it was before. <laughs> and what ends up happening, you can adjust that when it was on the dim bulb tester, you can, you can adjust it up to 50. But in reality, when you take it and put it in the mains, you probably got it more at 150. And you can, you certainly can blow the thing up um, if you're not careful. Now, one thing you can tell if your idle current's way off, either high or low. If these are ice cold after a while, and of course right now I just turned it on. So they're cold, right? You feel a piece of metal, the heat sinks, it's cold. It's cold. If you feel these ice cold after the after your receiver amplifier's been on 50 minutes, 30 minutes with an AB class amplifier like a lot of the vintage equipment is, your idle current is probably low. And if this is steaming hot, like you put your fingers on it, right? And it's like putting your hand on a cigarette lighter. There's something wrong too. The idle current's high. And if I were to adjust the idle current up when it was plugged into the dim bulb tester, these would be hot. <laughs> it wouldn't take long. It wouldn't take long for these to be hot. And if I got ridiculous, well, you can, um, you can destroy your amplifier that way. But I, I just wanted to share that with you and show that to you. So you don't make a mistake, especially you guys first starting out. It's great that you got a dim bulb tester. You know, you need it. You got to have one if you're going to work on this equipment to save it in case you've got some sort of a power supply short or you've got shorted out outputs or some issue that's going to burn up stuff in your unit. It definitely, you've got to have it. But the one caution is this, is when you're checking the idle current, make sure you're in the mains. And if you're checking the idle current, you're probably at the end of your project and you're getting toward... And you're getting toward uh, the completion. So hopefully you've plugged it into your mains. But a lot of times I started on the dim bulb tester. I just leave it in there. And it's easy to forget about it, I guess, is what I'm saying. I'm not going to go over how to build a dim bulb tester because there must be a hundred videos and a thousand articles on the internet on how to do that. So it should be easy for you guys to find that. I will say that I use a hundred watt bulb for almost all the equipment I've ever worked on and it works the best for me. Other people have other ideas. You've got to decide for yourself what wattage bulb you want to use for your equipment. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up down below. For you non-subscribers, I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to the channel and to my present subscribers. As always, thank you so much. Y'all have a good day.